Hi everybody, welcome to the video. Thank you so much for joining us here. My name is Kirk with Tactical Options Trading and today we're talking about options being exercised and we're getting started right now. So we're taking a question today from Alexis and she says, do you mind answering a couple of things? So I opened up a put spread. My buy put was the 1070 strike and the sell put was the 1040 strike. Well, I lost track of the time. It happens guys, right? and I couldn't close it before expiration, so I got exercised. By the way, I had three contracts and the market closed at 10.33. So let's break it down, you guys, because I think a lot of times people don't understand what happens at expiration if both of their strikes, as in this case, were in the money. So I went back, I found a stock that was trading at 10.33, and it, or it closed at 10.33, and it came up with everybody's favorite stock. Well, I, I shouldn't say it's everybody's favorite stock, but you know, it's a, a stock that a lot of people trade. Uh, Tesla, so back on November 12th, Tesla closed at 10.33, and you can see that closing uh, mark right there at 10.33 back on November 12th, and that was the price that she told us that it closed at. And just to dial it down a little bit further so that we can visually see on the chart where these strikes were, and I think I think options trading is so visual when you look at the options chains and the, and the, uh, the charts and everything, so this is why I'm breaking it down here, but we're looking at the 15 minute chart here on Tesla, and there's that close at 10.33, and that was on option expiration Friday right there on back on November 12th. And here's her 1070 long put that she uh, purchased, and there's that 1040 short put that she sold. Uh, looking at this, this is a bearish bias on the market. You can see that she bought a higher put and sold a lower put. So without knowing everything of what Alexa said, this looks like she was expecting the stock to go down. And she said that it closed at 1033. So looking at it on an options chain, again, just to get that visual look here, there's that 1070 long. And again, looking at on option expiration Friday right here, there's that 1070 long, there's that 1040 put, and we closed right there at 1033. So you can see that both of these strikes were in the money at expiration. So again, 1070 long, the 1040 short. Let's talk about our rights and obligations. So on that long put, that 1070 long, that gives Alexis the right to sell stock at 1070. So when you buy a put, that gives you the right to sell stock at a certain price. In this case, it's that 1070 put. And then that 1040 put, that obligates, in this case, Alexis, it obligates her to buy stock at 1040. So she has the right to sell stock at 1070, but she's obligated to buy stock at 1040. So remember, she has three contracts. So let's figure this out. So it went all the way through expiration. Both of these strikes, as we've already discussed, Discussed, we're in the money. So what happens? So she was obligated to buy stock at 1040. So we take 1040 times 300 because she had three contracts. That is a debit out of her account for 312,000. But now she owns the stock. She has 300 shares of stock in her account. But now she just sells that stock. She has the right to sell that stock at 1070. Now remember, all this is going on behind the scenes because this is after expiration. The broker's gonna handle all this because both of these options are in the money at expiration. Now I wanna throw in a little caveat here just to be careful. When you're close to options expiration, if you have one strike in the money and then one strike out of the money, uh, uh, that could be a little bit tricky because that strike that's out of the money, um, that's going to expire worthless. And then you might just be on the hook for that one strike that's in the money. So, you know, be really careful when you're trading close to expiration. You either want these kind of deep in the money if you're just going to let them both expire in the money or far out of the money. But if they're right there on that line, you might want to look at closing out your trades a little bit before expiration because of the situation. But in this case, again, both of these expired in the money. So she had a debit out of her account at 312000 but she's long. She has the stock now in her account, but she can sell that at 1070. So she sells that or the broker sells it. Again, this is all after, after behind the scenes. Um, uh, so the broker sells that at 321. So you take 1070 times 300, that's 321,000. Again, we take the 321 to find out what that difference is. We take the 321 minus the 312,000. That gives us a gross profit in our account of $9,000. Now, remember, we took that $9,000 profit, but she had to buy this spread. So she had to pay a debit to get into this spread. So to figure out the net profit, we take the $9,000 minus the debit paid. So let's say in this case, maybe that was $3,000 that she had to pay to get into this trade. So she has a net profit here of about $6,000. You know, when when we, we talk about options expiring in the money, they have their full value. So in this case, they had the full value of 10 cents 
1070 and 1040. That's a difference of $30, right? But she had uh, 300 shares of this uh, stock. So you take 30 times 300, that's $9,000. But she had that debit that she paid. So if you guys would like to learn more about exercising uh, options or options being assigned early, check out these videos right here because I go into more detail about options expiration and being assigned on options early. Uh, so hopefully this video has been helpful. Thank you guys so much for joining in on this video and we'll see you on the next one.